Dear Chairman, thank you for the kind invitation to present at this year's EBC. My presentation is entitled Rocks in Hard Places, the Role of Imaging in Calcified Bifurcation. The objective of my presentation is to define where imaging fits in algorithmic approach, the criteria we may use to guide intervention, real world experience, where perhaps qualitative calcium characterization will uh, further advance our decision making, and the role of imaging in planning and mitigating the challenges of treating rocks in hard places. There's data out there to highlight the significance of both the presence of calcification and bifurcation, which are closely associated. And here we see from the Mount Sinai group a very high rate of periprocedural myocardial infarction, particularly in the combined presence of calcification and bifurcation. They used relatively high rates of rotational atherectomy, almost 50% in this cohort, but it must be criticised that actually imaging use was relatively uh, rare, with, with less than 10% uh, being uh, guided by IVUS or OCT. It's therefore gratifying to see in the most contemporary algorithmic approach by Margaret McIntaggart and James Spratt that imaging plays a very central role in decision making. And why is that? Well, we know from this uh, rather elegant series looking at a uh, patient cohort who had angiography and IVUS and OCT, that angiography identifies calcium in just less than half of patients, where OCT and then actually IVUS best of all identifies a, far, a, a much more significant cohort. When it comes to comparing IVUS and OCT, actually they're fairly well matched in terms of assessment of calcium angle. Obviously OCT has the potential for uh, assessing uh, calcific thickness, although reverberation artifact by IVUS may be a surrogate of that. Why is that important? Well, there's data out to show that where we have an arc exceeding 180 degrees, a thickness of more than 500 micron, an extension over more than five millimeters, that we can very accurately predict stent under expansion. In this validation, we see that 30% you know, of uh, stents fail to achieve a 70% expansion where all three of these criteria are met. There's been some very elegant work done by the Light Lab Initiative looking at the impact of OCT in uh, 12 uh, centers in the States. Must be acknowledged that it seems that direct stenting is, is often used in uh, the United States. And so as a consequence, OCT identifying calcium resulted in a change in decision-making in almost a half of patients, either taking a compliant or non-compliant balloon, but then also advancing uh, your decision to use of a cutting or a scoring balloon in a quarter and taking atherectomy or laser in a further 25%. Where no change in device was uh, made, actually the majority were having fairly aggressive uh, strategies uh, deployed anyhow. But we saw overall an uptick in the use of aggressive calcium modification from 3% to over a quarter, 27%. In our practice in, in Bristol, actually across uh, four years, we've seen an interesting increase in intravascular imaging in orange here with rotational atherectomy. You see a drop in volume in 2019, and that was due to the um, uh, the receipt of IVL in 2018, where we took a departmental uh, strategy to use imaging in the vast majority of our cases. And now you can see that in over 80% of all of our uh, calcium modification cases, we are reliant upon imaging in both detailing the extent, but also ensuring adequate modification and optimization of our stent results. Beyond that, I think there is a role for the, for the need to characterize calcium and here very beautifully shown in a cohort of over 1200 ACS patients, we see that there are a number of different types of calcium that we may have to treat. Superficial calcific sheet, eruptive calcified nodule, calcified protrusion, and it may be that we need to use different adjunctive technology or combinations of adjunctive technology when faced with this type of calcium. So my personal approach is an image guided one where uncrossable, I'll be using rotablation, where we see evidence of significant burden of calcification according to the criteria I've identified. Then firstly, actually I'll palpate with a non-compliant balloon. But if there's failure to yield, then, and if the imaging shows calcified protrusion, then I'll look to debulk. In the presence of more circumferential calcium, then I'll turn to IVL for the purpose of fracture with further imaging to, to identify uh, effective uh, modification. Let me show you a case. This is a 71-year-old with stable angina, but symptoms persisting despite optimal medical therapy. 
right coronary is dominant and relatively free of disease. Circumflex has some mid-vessel disease, which is FFR negative. And then we see in this cranial projection really very uh, significant and extensive disease of the LAD affecting a large first diagonal branch and also a septal branch more distally. We took a decision to treat the proximal bifurcation by complex two stent and provisional approach to the septal LAD complex more distally. So predilatation and then imaging of both limbs, and here I show you the OCT of the diagonal, which shows rather elegantly sparing of the carina as we'd expect pathophysiologically with calcium in the diagonal that may only need further palpation. But in the LAD, we see circumferential calcification over a uh, very extensive length and more uh, thick than 500 micron. And so uh, immediately take IBL uh, with delivery of 40 pulses and importantly by OCT show very significant fracture and modification. So embark upon stenting distally with a 2.5 by 28, stenting into the diagonal with again a DK collot technique, so proximal optimization again with a 3.5 balloon, OCT confirmation of wire passage into the LAD, kissing, followed by then the proximal LAD stent. Now interestingly, the OCT actually shows that the stent inadvertently extends back into the left main, but fortunately, you know, we've taken a 3.5 device that will expand to five millimeters in that left main stem to achieve stent ap apposition. And here we see the final result with gratifyingly fantastic stent coverage at the level of the complex D1 LAD bifurcation, uh, expansion of our stent to five millimeters in the left main, and an MSA in that proximal segment where we had high grade calcification of 10.2. So in summary, rocks in hard places, they associate bifurcation and calcification associate and are related to poor outcome. It's essential we recognize calcification to ensure good result. Imaging is better than angiography, and we now have criteria that we must use to ensure we avoid stent under expansion. IVL is a fantastic disruptive technology, and we must be seeking to avoid acute stent under expansion to avoid late stent failure and achieve best outcome for our patients. I thank you for your attention.